So Grand Rising, Grand Rising today is, let me make sure I have the right day because I said the wrong day of the day, Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. And what we're looking at is going to be the dollar index, uh, Euro USD, and the futures market, and as well, a little bit of CFD, because I do have a position that I'm managing <clears throat> on another account. So uh, today, what we're going to be focused on is this. Now, I may end up switching over at one point, because um, I'm only going to take one trade on my on my top step account, and then I have another top step account uh, that I'm starting today. So like by Win the trade on my first one, I'm going to be done. If I lose a trade on that, on this account, I'll be done either way. Um, but that's going to be kind of the goal today. So if I have to switch over, you guys will kind of have that understanding. Um, but looking at today, you know, like for me, as you guys can see here, this one hour, 15 and five setup, um, I'd love to see price come back into the 17, 820 levels, kind of come in alignment with the 50% of this one hour and then basically coming down and filling some of this inefficiency on the 15. Um, but don't forget the double bottom down here is definitely, you know, an obvious to me, uh, W pattern, right? So price kind of looks like a W from this situation. So you couldn't almost anticipate price to come down and run these lows first, do something like this before it then would rally up maybe, or maybe it just continues lower. We've been in a really, you know, crazy bearish market, but when I can see a one hour, you know, push like they did from here yesterday, Right. I would anticipate that they either hold this level and at least return back up a little bit. Or, like I said, they go ahead and flush this out. And then later on today, we're able to get something that starts to maybe build back up to, uh, you know, come back into this range. But we'll see what they print today and be a little bit more patient than yesterday. We'll be posting yesterday's, um, you know, vlog from yesterday. I didn't end up losing yesterday. I took like two trades. I'm pretty sure I lost two. Um, I'm in the process of moving right now. So. There may be some days where I have to post the video just the next morning or the next day with the other one. Um, but I'll be fully moved <clears throat> uh, going into the month of May. So we move pretty much uh, 24th, 25th, like next week. Um, and I've already kind of like started breaking down my office and whatnot. So um, bear with me. But we will continue to, um, you know, drop streams and uh, we will be back on schedule here soon to do uh, the mentorships and to launch the discord so um i appreciate you guys watching let's see what we get today i'm going to switch over to the snipe window and see if we can see anything but me personally i think that when you look at the markets you know we're super oversold um we're in an oversold market and i believe that either we're going to swipe liquidity or we're going to since we've already confirmed that higher high on that one hour that we could hold this area uh to rally up a little bit into this eighteen thousand range so Let's see what we get. I'm going to switch the windows really quick and uh, trade safe. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, so. Okay, so we're about one minute out. Let's lock in. Make sure you went through your trader's constitution. And uh, let's look up for setups today that are worth drawing up. I am watching Top Step here on the other side, just kind of seeing what they're doing. Now, Rips is on the session, which I really do like Rips. He's only trading his combine accounts today because he doesn't like the price action. So um, just kind of keeping that in mind as well. So let's focus up. Let's get it. So just remember, uh, like we talked about, those equal lows are down there uh, at that 17,800 range. So we'll definitely stay on point here as we're watching. So looking at the other two, 
BS is showing some weakness on that one iron. YM's kind of sitting at the 38.22. So we'll watch how this first minute closes. I like where the price is at on like the one hour being below all the opening prices and alignment there. So we'll see. First minute was bearish. Okay, so price seems like it is kind of falling off. They do have that target. When you really look at it from this perspective, um, we'll see, right? Because when you look at it upside down, you look at how it's been building up, you know, here, comes up, closes, holds that, you know, higher low, let's just say essentially, and then keeps going. Um, it's very interesting price and in what they're trying to do. So um, I will be patient here. Um, waiting for that first five minute close to kind of see what we get. So if we can get price to come back down, I think I am gonna buy this price. Uh, what's the low? Seventeen eight forty six. Just make sure seventeen. Eight profits are eighteen one hundreds. Okay. So that that risk is quite a bit. So I would like for it to pull back down and tap New York open price. A little bit lower, a little bit lower, like right below it. So I'm willing to take that price below opening price. Now, if it comes and takes me out fairly quickly, then great. You know what I mean? But I want to be able to see if I can catch that bounce play today. Let me make sure I have it over here. So yeah, I just want to see if this play is going to bounce in this area. And if it doesn't, then I'm looking a little bit lower down in here. I like where we're at on the one hour and the uh, 15 and like the, the alignment. So if price could rally up from here, this would be really nice. I would think personally. Oh, okay. That's just delayed. I just opened up trade of eight, but so I could see us getting above these highs and then that one hour moving to 18 K. So that would be really nice to see this build um, after going below that New York open top. Okay, just kind of watching, seeing the prices stacking here. I like that first five minute close being higher high. So now we can just make our way up, um, you know, making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. I think we could end up making our way to the top side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so we'll just have to see. And I like I like 18K um, on uh, NQ here. If we can hold this level. Now, if they reach for that five minute inefficiency at eight seventeen eight twenties, um, then that's just what they do. But I do think they may be able to hold this one hour area possibly.
unless they want those equal O's or that imbalance fill. So but we'll have to see here. You know, price coming back below New York Open isn't a good sign. I'm just being honest. Because once it pumps and closes, like it should stay high. It shouldn't come back down like, unless it's going to go lower. So they may want those equal O's. But like I said, I like where we're at in the location of the one hour. So I'm just going to be patient here and uh, see if we can, we're positioned in a good spot or not. Mm -mm. I think if we can get five minute closes strong, like back above daily open, that's going to be a little bit more uh, ideal for me to see this actually continue. So it's not really looking too great from that daily open, right? You have a candle closing away from New York and daily open, and this five minute doesn't look so good. It almost looks like a pump up. So we'll see. They may want that inefficiency filled. So that level just isn't looking so great, honestly, at this point. I think those loads are going to get ran. So it does look like we're going to reach for that level for sure. Um, you know, that inefficiency down here is just very open uh, with the end of the day still, you know, available. So it's like now we're about to go below all the opening prices. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for that. So I'm going to have to switch um, over because I can only accept one loss in this account to so give me one second. Sorry. Do, do, do. Okay, so now maybe I think they've just pierced down to the level. It's just now waiting for the reactions down here. Uh, but what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to switch over to my other, uh, like my combine account, because I do not want to take any more trades on this account that I have. Let me take a look at it. Um, middle screen here really quick how does this literally not loading it's crazy man crazy 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 so it almost looks like i said they're in that right area this is uh this isn't the actual um that's cfd price so make sure i have this on the yeah Okay, I was watching this. Okay, so they are pulling up fairly quickly here, I would say, on that NQ from that area. So if I end up from switching accounts and end up missing this, then it just is what it is. Today. Because um, I took my order, I think, a little too early. Um, and now I believe that price could definitely run off. And that one-hour area is exactly what I wanted, but just kind of wondering about... Um, what they're going to do here. Okay. <clears throat> so as of right now, like I'm just watching the price. I do have um, a CFD position I was looking for in this area. Like if it was to come down a little bit more, but I do like this. So 645 to 700, that's quite a bit of risk. Um, but they're still so high on the market right now. So. Mm -hmm.
So still watching the price here. Um, now my CFD, I was able to get a position off of the London Open, um, which it looks the same, right, as, uh, in Q, but basically off that 17700 tap of London Open and then the risk uh, being right here. So it's like, basically about a 12 point risk and then the entries are on the 17700s so trying to see if price can rally up above if not i think price could come down to that 17670s first and tap that 15 5 minute open um and then rally so we'll see and that's what i'm basically trying to get ready for really quickly um on my nq trade over here But I do like this uh, area that they're at. So, like, we'll see if that inefficiency fill will be, you know, pretty much the move uh, for them today. But just trying to log in over here. It's not letting me log in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Okay, it says I have to log out, which I don't. So just give me one second, guys. But like I said, I am managing that CFD position with that London top, but I'm having trouble logging in really quick to trade it. So. Price is moving, like I said, the only one I have on the board right now is this London open top with about a 12 point risk. Um, goal is to get from that 17,700, at least up into the uh, 18K range. Um, so that would be really nice. I've logged out, but how do I log in? Okay, so still not out of the woods, I don't think, on that, but hopefully I can be in here. Um, okay. Okay, so it looks like price is actually falling lower. Um, that 15 and five minute position looks like it's going to brew. So hopefully they let me log in by then. <laughs> okay, so still watching the price. Um, looks like, let me check that CFD. The CFD is probably not going to make it now. We shall see. But they may just want those equal lows, or they may just, like I said, want to reach into this 15 minute area, the 17,675 uh, quarter. So they're pushing, they're pushing. So give me one second. I got to make sure I can log in, guys. Just go watching the CFD position. Make sure I'm looking at this right. Okay. So looking at that CFD price, like I said, I have an entry um, off this London open. So price came down, came back, grabbed 17, basically 700. I was trying to get that London open, then I put my wrist fairly close. Um, because I'm anticipating that this would be a bounce play. So if it doesn't bounce and it goes lower, I would take one more on uh, CFD because that was like my first attempt. This would be um my second attempt right in this area potentially. Or like I said, uh, when I started the stream, is I'll wait for those double bottoms to be swept 
and then I'll be able to uh, factor in a position. And then with this, you know, it's just like those equal lows aren't looking so great. Usually I like to see an like an oversold market here. But right now, I just don't really, you know, looking at it right now, I don't know if that's what they really want to do. Uh, so, I mean, it's just kind of not the best price action, honestly, because I'm pretty sure I got right now on CFD. No, we're still fine. Okay, so they're blasting lower. ES is falling lower. YM is falling lower. So I think they are going to swipe these lows. So what I'm going to do is... Yeah, let's see if it's gonna let me log in really quick. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so give me one second, you guys. I need to make sure this is. Yeah, so right now I'm not in any positions. Um, I've been stopped out. Let's see. So that they're coming, they came in and they built the inefficiency in the five minute area. So that's what I'm kind of looking for. I'm just kind of log in really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Let me log in. Let me switch this. Okay, so now we are in the account. So I'm just trying to make sure I was in the right account. So with price filling the inefficiency here on the 15.5, like this is your imbalance fill, the 20 level that we were looking for, um, price may have already tapped. Um, looking at the other two, you do have ES kind of pushing lower for those lows of the day, 50.81s. And the low on YM is 37.838. So, um, you know, just looking at this, you're going to have to basically uh, just be very careful here. I mean, this has already responded off the level that I want to see personally, right? When you're looking at, you know, how that 15, that five presented. So just kind of like, damn, you know, came right into the 18, two thirties and then turned around. So even on my uh, CFD, you know, the position actually looks not so bad, to be honest, um, to continue up. But it's just like, damn, you know, unfortunately, uh, they pushed me out first. So. And then this has kind of started to take off. So I'm kind of like, damn, I am below New York Open. But I really think that when you fib this, all right, from that previous low like this to those highs, um, the best spot was below that 50% inside the inefficiency. So they really turned the price around already in that area. Um, I wouldn't personally want to like buy anything here or anything. If anything, right, we're making lower lows and lower highs and we've come up and touched the new group. But now if we close higher than this candle right here, um, to me, that would mean they're going to probably run the highs out. 
But like I said, I've already pretty much missed the moves, unfortunately, with that one loss in the other account. And then I'll be able to take, trying to take that one here, but I'm not going to be able to get that one in. So a little flat, a little flustered, a little bit, just a little bit, because um, it wasn't letting me log in to the other account. So pull back down potentially here. Let me look at this subjectively too. Okay, so still watching this price. The only time I would ever buy this is if it came all the way back down. Um, but it's just like at this point, I feel like I'm just chasing on this situation. So So we're still inside that five minute range. So as price pushes back below this opening price, um, we'll see how this five minute closes. You know, look, we'll look for 9 a.m. price as well. <clears throat> but you do, when you look at a line graph, you do have that sign of strength. Uh, so anything that pulls back would probably be good. And then you want to know where that five minute open is and that five minute 50%, right? So as price is playing right here, if I was to press the buy button right now at 17,869, you know, all the way down to 49, that'd be a 20 point risk. So I want to wait until it gets into that area so I can use the actual low uh, if I plan to long this position. So I'd like to see price come back down. They're not really breaking the lows on the one hour on um, all three, especially like YM's holding 38 pretty well. Um, so I'm just wanting to see, you know, you don't want to get caught up though, because they do have on higher time frames those equal lows, but we are inside this five minute range still, still playing. So, you know, London open tap, you'd want to kind of know like how far is London open from that low, right? And that's about 25 points. So I would want it to go maybe a little lower to wherever I can factor in a 20 point risk, right? Because if I can factor in a 20 point risk, and that's not so bad. So I do have that CFD position still in, but I'm just watching the uh, this uh, futures. Like I said, um, if I was able to log in, I'd probably take the 15.5 position at that 17, 820 range area. Um, so, but wasn't able to do it. But on, like I said, on this CFD price here really quick, it loads, right? 
Um, I was able to find the position like inside the 50% of this. It's so like 17, 6, 80, 79, and then putting the risk at the low and then price rally, and then I was able to, you know, pretty much cap it off. So like these highs look like obviously they're gonna get ran. Um and so that's why I'm I, I would like to find a position here, but I would have to have a favorable risk, you know, like going back below New York open. But like this is a higher, 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 low, higher, high. I kind of like this area to be honest. But I realized from the other day that I'm so susceptible to more risk inside this expansion. So I'm just going to have to kind of be blessed with the CFD position for right now. Um, losing on the other account, because like I said, I only wanted to take one loss on there and then I have this combine account. So, I mean, the way that they're rallying up right now just seems like they want to uh, for sure extend this price. We're actually getting five minute higher highs here in about three minutes. So now if they can close higher high here and come back into this range. I can start factoring something up off of this low uh, 18 or 17, 822s. Uh, 32s would be here, 42s would be here. All right, so about a 20 point risk would be there. So, The price is rallying here on futures, as you guys can see. Um, the only time when price made that higher high, kind of broke out of that area, and now has done what it's doing. It's really just taken off. There's really nothing else to do uh, that we really can do, I would say, because this one hour, I want to show this really quick. When you look at the one hour, 15 and five altogether, this is a beautiful breakout before the, the session started to pull back to clean out some people inside the inefficiencies. So... I just had a lot going on there, um, trying to <laughs> trying to get it all uh, put together. Um, but my CFD position worked out because I had a limit. Right? I had a limit at basically 79 and tapped the limit perfectly. Um, the risk was about a 15 point risk. And then price has already uh, gotten to a point where, you know, I can basically manage the risk. So uh, I'm going to look at a couple things here. So I'm going to look at this 15 and 5 next to each other. And that was, a, yeah, you know, 50% five-minute fill uh, and then pretty much a tap almost off of that open. So if you got, you know, 17, 17, 8, 25s, and then you had a risk of uh, 20 points, right, you'd be somewhere in there, like 1803s, 1805s, right? So like maybe that wick glow right there, and then price goes here, and you're already, you know, paying yourself in this position. So um, I like it. So, like I said, I didn't end up catching that uh, futures position. I wasn't able to log in the trade of eight, but I did catch it on CFD. Um, it's a pretty good position, too, so I'm pretty happy. So, already capped off this position. The entry was, like, right in here, so I capped it off just in case. So we haven't broke those highs yet, all right? So 9 a.m., you know, now we have that down candle. We have a rally up. Anything that comes back below and touches that New York Open, I may take a, a ride to the upside off of that. Okay, so I do want to do this here so we can see the small time price action. 
All right. So I'm just looking for that New York open tap and then to see how price is going to rally in that area if, if it can. Mm. But we haven't broke this five minute swing yet. So. Price having trouble at the 17900s. So. So watching the price here, um, you know, we're having a hard time here at the 17900 level. Same thing on CFD. They're having a hard time at 17750. So, um, you know. So. The way it's pulling back now, I would love for it to you know, even just fill this imbalance and I could possibly use something like this, um, this low here if it was a pullback. But um, it's already pretty much taking off from that uh, area that I like to see. So I don't need to force myself in anything. Like I said, I do have a pretty good CFD position that I'm managing. Um, so let me just do this really quick because there's really nothing on small time frames for me to see left on there. Uh, and I just want to play this position up to 18K. So if it can slip this wick, even if it can come up into 17,900, that would be a you know pretty phenomenal trade. And then with uh, NQ here, um, you know it's just going to be difficult. You know how you now have your swing from here to here, All right? So if they come back below or tap New York Open, that'd be the only areas that I would personally want to enter the market. So I like how this could pull back because they're just building up more and more sell side. But we do have to remember that those lows at 17,792 are there. So, you know, a breakout of this area and then a test back um, of this level could be good. So the CFD laptop died. I almost forgot the charger. <laughs> I just don't see anything that I could take. Uh, right, yeah. You know, I'm not saying that it won't go up. Just uh, unfortunately, like I said, I wasn't able to get that 50% fill. And to me, I'd rather see them break out to the next um, range, right? That next hole level. But I'm going to be patient here.
If price can go back, you know, I would say maybe down into this area below back opening price, there may be a chance still on the uh, there may be a chance still left on futures to secure something. Just trying to make sure everything's loaded. So right now, like I said, I'm still being patient here. That five minute swing is still holding. Um, all three of them are showing weakness on that one hour. So um, but these one hours to me, I just think they're faking people out. So let's see if we can uh, find a position now on my other. Uh, on my top ship account, I was done for today, but this is a combine account that I'm going to be doing. Uh, you can have three accounts with them. So I know some of you guys are new. Um, you can have three accounts with them in total at XFA. So that's the goal is to get to three XFA accounts. So real quick, we are pushing down to those levels that we like. Now, like I said, on a higher time frame, one hour, you can definitely go look and see that lowest set under 17.8, but like I said, that also is a good thing, I think. So any push back down, I may try this area right here. If it can pull back down. So let me see, uh, 67. 67 flats. And then take profits are in the 18 Ks, 18 twos. Let's do 18 150s and I'll rearrange it later. So now what I wanna see is that Candle close and then come back down. I could tap. I could tap and go here. Eighteen eight sixty five. So I need a sixty five here. I may look to grab that. Ah, that's uh, I'm not gonna have enough time to grab it. Got to be ready right there when it's tapping the New York open. Uh, if you're gonna take a trade like that, you got to tap. You got to be able to. Yeah, you got to be able to hit that tap. You know, have your risk in place. Right, even using like this low, like 60, so like a five point risk, something like that, eight point risk. Price, you know, goes one to two in your favor, and then you're able or break a structure on that five and one minute, you know, out of the execution window you're in, and you you taper it off. So I missed that one. I'm not going to force myself into this. Um, because like I said, I'm holding those CFD positions. So price is moving really good there. Like I said, I have that CFD position, so I'm really liking how that's looking. Um, really good spot, 79, right? Uh, they gave me a pretty good fill on that. Uh, 79 fill. And when you look at it, um, it basically was the open of this candle is what I was trying to get. So they ended up giving me 79, like somewhere in this area. Um, and then price started to obviously rally up. Which you can see here, and then as soon as we break this area, the trade that I have here at that seventy nine, uh, area eighty area, let's just say, um, I will, as soon as we break structure here, I'm gonna cap this one off, right? Because there's no reason to do anything except wait for price to run up to seventeen uh nine fifties, right? To get into this area, and then to slip that liquidity and go to eighteen k would be nice, but they've got to break that level for me to be able to want to um take that type of trade. Okay, so I want price to be below open if I'm going to take another one. I actually wouldn't mind an imbalance fill, you know, a little imbalance fill or a London open tap because 
London open tap would be nice. And then you have like a 20 point risk from there. That would be really interesting. Getting inside that five minute open uh, as well would be pretty nice. I feel like they're building up a lot of liquidity to the downside though too, you know. Um, you know, for that CFD position, it's just hey, you would what if you're along, I would think you want to see them go, especially on NQ, you want to see the 17920 is broken. Um that CFD position, you're gonna want to see the same area. So I'd have to see what that price is. But you're gonna want to see this area, 17770 is broken and just ran through. Um, I would think personally. And this is just printing so slow on the um on here, so I'm gonna focus on here right now. I almost wanna like position in here to go higher, but we're not below the prices, so mm -hmm. So the way that price is getting ready to close, right? It closed higher than that whole level and it's getting ready to close again. I just feel like they're gonna run the highs out. So, you know, in a position like this today, price ran up and then comes back down, touches that area. Let me see how much that risk was. That would have been way too far of a risk. So like I said, a New York open tap, probably to the body closure would have been it right there on a five minute, so. I do like how price is running. Let me check that in. Uh, and so see, that looks really good. And the difference I'd say with this one is just there's those equal highs that make it like, okay, they really could just come swipe this and then fall. Or hopefully, like I said, there's lots of sell side liquidity and they run that price up into the 17900s and then I'm able to uh, manage that trade as well. But that one hour 15 price, I mean, today just looked like for sure buys to me. Um, the only thing that made it ner makes me nervous about it is the equal lows, but the candle closures going into the space is what really, um, you know, showed me that we could rally. So to measure that area too, to kind of show you guys what we're looking at, this is the area that we're really looking at as prices is actually skyrocketing now, right? So there we go.
So really happy with the trade. Um, like I said, for that CFD, um, I just wasn't able to factor in today on this because I switched over. Um, but this is doing well. I think we can, like I said, get up into this area. I'm actually going to set some alerts uh, for even really the 17900 area. Because um, if we can reach into there, 17.9, how many points is that? Uh, let me check that one more time. 17.7, seven, 8, 9, seven, so. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then, uh, like I said, I'm not going to chase this. So whatever happens on here is what happens. So let me make sure I'm managing this tree over here. Okay, we're still good over here. So really just watching, um, like I said, that price level here. Now, if I had to see it, or excuse me, an MQ position off that 50% off that 17830s, as soon as we broke out of that five minute range, right, on a line graph, so the technicals, um, I, if I have a wick entry, especially I'm going to protect myself, you know what I mean? Because it's, there's no reason not to stick on the CFD position. I do have relatively new wick entry. Let's just give it, I have, let's just give it 10 extra points on what I have. So you still are in the wick, right? Well, now usually, you know, you could, uh, once price is closed higher, you know, now you're inside this five minute range. This is your low, this is your high. So this could be your, you could leave this your low, or once it breaks out of the range, you can reduce it to the body closures or to your entry wherever you got in. Um, my limit hit at a good spot, so I was able to get a pretty good entry, so I could use the stop loss low still. But I want to get a similar position like that here on futures. Um, just gotta, just gotta work. So this is our new high, right? So we have a new high on the market on um, fifteen five. So just want to see these closes above 17,900. And like I said, these um, these will probably run off. And then watching that uh, position here, same thing. Like I said, getting that, um, you know, pretty good entry here. Even up into here, right? Slipping those highs would be nice. Going 50% would be right around that 17,900 area if they could get that far. Um, but just understand they did sweep those highs. So 
uh, same thing here. You rel they're relatively you know, the same. So you did get the high sweep here. So that's that exit of that range. And so now we're just going to wait, you know. Um, there may be pullbacks below wicks, like in here. Um, and maybe you're able to factor, you know, a position under this wick inside this five-minute candle with about a 20-point risk uh, to then get, you know, 60, 80-plus points up to 18K. So um, not for sure. You know, we're not getting the, the most volume here. But I am focused on this 15 and 5 minute candle here. So I will kind of start, you know, preparing the position for this. Um, and then we will look at the stop loss low just in case it goes way too low. We don't want it to just run past on us here. Uh, 17, 8, 22. Okay. And then the take profit is going to be inside the 18 ones. 18150s, we'll just put it there for right now. Um, one contract here. And then uh, what I'm looking for is, you know, that five minute to basically slip that wick. If it can slip, that 15, excuse me, 15 and five to slip and come into this area below New York Open, then I would use this low uh, on this candle here as my wrist low. So 22 flat. Potentially. So that price is pushing down. Now I am being, you know, understanding of the um of the equal lows at the bottom, right? But if price can push into what I like, it already made that high and comes back into the area. I mean, we're we're tapping daily open right now. You know, the only thing I don't like is the timing. So this five minute close, you know, if you were to get in, you want to use that previous low, right? So below New York open or in here, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with buying at the daily at, at or below the daily open. Um, this isn't below, so this would have been have to be like a daily open tap type trade. But uh, the only reason I'm not gonna just force my way is because the timing, right? It's nine twenty four. I want to wait for either like nine thirty, or um, you know, like ten, uh, ten a.m. stuff like that. So just kind of waiting here. So that breakout and that tap of daily open might have been it for the rally up. Um, so I'm just going to have to be patient, honestly. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so I don't have anything on the board as of right now. Um, other than that in cube or yeah, the NQ position on uh CFD. So to me, you know, once they break that broke out of this area, if they fail to steal the open, right? If they start closing lower and lower and lower than that, especially like even just right here, respecting 17, 750, and then going lower at that liquidity sweep, they may not want to go very much higher. So um, we'll continue to watch here. I don't really, like I said, it's not the right time. So I'm just going to be kind of sitting back and waiting on that timing. Yeah, guys, I don't even, that's the same thing. Like what Rich just said, I don't know if I'm going to take a trade today um, on my Combine Futures account. I might wait because I want to, I just want a great setup for the first trade on this one. Um, so, I mean, there's some more news the rest of the day, but, um, you know, with how price is playing, once we, you know, broke about 17.9, if this is an absorption, then, like I said, if you look at it, they basically just held price down to oversold to me, um, failed to go above 17.9. If you look at all three of the assets, they're failing their whole levels. All right. So, you know, for me, it's just like, you know, NAS is the only one to me showing absorption um, just because of how it printed. So we'll see. Let's look here. The risk to these lows is still way too far. Let's take a look at a small time price action here. so that's a lower low close um on the 15 still inside the range of the day on es ym still inside its range um so we'll see you know if they close if they can't close back above 51 um then they're going to go lower and same thing with NQ. If we can't really print above uh, where we're at currently right now, um, we're not going to go any higher. So how oh, that was that 15 minute 50 percent as I was looking at ES. So if price can go back below New York, I may take this trade here and put my risk uh, 17850s. Uh, they may have done it already. I was looking over. And then CFD positions are fine. So we'll see here. Prices, like I said, um, had already rallied up. So I just don't like those lows um, in general. And then YM is just crushing now. It blew through the 38, 100 whole level. So um, So I do like the 15.5 price right here um, that presented here at 9.30. Um, the one thing I will say is you've got to be ready for that 15-minute down candle and for the closure of the 9.15, right? So that 9, I think it was like 9.15 to 9.30 candle. So this was 9.20 to 9.25, 9.25 to 9.30 price pushed back below daily, below New York, right? So you can essentially come in here and start using this as your risk um essentially so i think i am going to take a trade here i'm going to try to get below new york open um but the timing the timing too it's only 9 32 so i'm not forcing myself into this one by any means 
And then looking at those CFDs, um, you know, they're still in that area, you know, so we'll, those are the ones I'm going to kind of wait on. If we have something better here at the end of the hour, I may factor in a trade here. But as of right now, they're not showing me enough to, um, they're not showing me enough to want to take the trade. You know, the probabilities just haven't, it, honestly, the, the probabilities of the trades that I've been looking for, there has been some there and I have hesitated on some, but there has been situations where like the usual risk on the geometry of the move is like a 20, 15 point risk. And it seems to be that most of these stretches that they're presenting now, 15, five and one somewhat are like uh, 30 points and 25 point risk. Right, so just having to switch up and be adaptable to the game, um, but this sideways price in this area is just or horrible to me right now. So they're pushing down. It seems like let me look at this really quick. So now prices below New York, below daily, right inside the five minute last down candle, inside the 15 minute last down candle. Um, there's just, you know, it's just not the timing. I like this price here, though, guys. I really do. Let me see the low on this candle here. The low is 853s. So. Take one here at or below New York Open, right? And then my risk is pretty close, right? But I'm anticipating that we're going to rally out of this area and go to these highs fairly quickly. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm looking for here today um, is getting that price below the open. So if it just comes down very quickly and gets me, though, um, that's okay, too. So they're all just kind of in that area. Just trying to see how far this would be. Yeah, so if that was to come down a little bit more, I would take another order before I would um before I would move the risk at this point. So if this can rally up into 18k from here, this would be a pretty good trade. So we'll see if price can go into this last 15 minutes of the hour. Um, now, I will say this. If they go down and just into that 17, 8, 20s and slip price um, and then rally from there, then I'll just take some notes. <laughs> but you're not seeing anything on the other two assets as well. So it's kind of like, you know, either this area could work um, or, like I said, they slip under the 17, 8, 20s um, and they present that, that opportunity. Now, my CFD position is still pretty low. So, like, I'm going to hold on to that pretty much until um, it would come back and, and break me even because I was able to partial a slight, a slight bit amount. So, we'll kind of see. You know, it just depends on what they want to do. So we are coming back down the CFD position as well, unfortunately. Um, but we'll see how that works. And then they stopped me out on this position here. So guys, I think that those equal lows really could just be um, that factor, right? They could slip those lows and there could be a great position after that. Um, but I have 
I have one, you know, my goal is to get this payout on top step. So I have my other account, which I can't, you know, take any more trades on. I have this combine, um, which is brand new essentially, which has a loss on it now. <laughs> and, um, those equal lows just aren't looking like they're going to hold my bad. I'm watching, um, the CFD it looks like it's getting ready to come hit that spot too. So, you know, for today, you know, I'm not going to push the envelope, um, you know, I don't even want to take another trade, honestly, at this point, just because, one, I'm in a slump. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of in a slump here. Let me on CFD, I'll do okay today, but I'm still going to get hit broken even, I think, on that trade. So, as you can see now, ES is taking the lows. YM is still hanging in the range, but it's kind of like the lagger. And then we have the giant, um, you know, pretty much we have the giant target here uh, on the one hour for uh nq so they may still like to me personally i've seen them do this a lot they may come under here you know slip this price here this wick 17 820s and then rally price up and hold it in this area and then continue to go um but you just got to look at the price they've already took the lows on es so i'm watching here my bad. i'm trying to see the cfd see if they're going to run that price too or not. So I just want to see what this looks like from here. I feel like I've just been hesitating. That's what it's been for me. It's just been a lot of hesitating, um, unfortunately. 17,836. Uh, it's already pushing Take profits are in the 150s. Okay, so right now, I mean, they've already kind of, you know, done that thing, but I just feel like they're not, they haven't broke the lows yet on here. So 53s here. They did hold that one minute price really nice. So I'm just going to kind of see how this price closes going into the last part of the hour. If there's a position, I'll take it. Um, if there's not, then, you know, I'm only taking one to two trades uh, when I take this uh, account. So we can uh, kind of push in there. That risk is going up. So we would need this five minute price to not rally so crazy and just kind of show us that they really do want to do that. And then I think that tap back into uh, the 55s would be pretty good. Somewhere in there, like that 55 range. So I want to actually do this really quick. Okay, so the only thing that's going to make this difficult is like the buying pro uh, process right here. So the stop loss would need to be the low on here. So whatever this low would be, which is 1740, let's just say 39. Let's do 40 here. And then take profits are in the 150s. So they might already take off. I'm not stressing. Um, I'm just kind of watching this area now to see if it makes sense to me. So now you have the five minute candles are playing inside the range. The one minute is right here. So if it was a comeback and tap, right? Um, I would want to basically have my risk at the low of this candle, so 39.5, 39.75. 39.75. Okay. So we'll see how this ends up closing. The price is already pretty much taken off there, so I'm just kind of watching this uh, 15 and 5 area. So 
So the five minutes don't look so good, right? When you're looking at those. So lower open, lower close, lower open, right? So now it's about the timing on this. If this was to work and you use this as your low, um, the timing will have to match right now. That timing is not matching. So if they slip the low, right, they go lower, then you're anticipating that last down candle. Right. If they slip past that, then like I said, they're gonna go lower on the five minute in general. But this right here is putting us at a better R and R, I would say. Uh this London open tap. It's just the other two, you have ES has swept the lows, you have YM still in the range. So it'll be uh, interesting to see if they do. So I want to wait for this five minute close to see. So that woman area looks great, right? Um, it's just the five minute price here is just not really showing us what we want to see yet. So, okay, I was just trying to a little delayed. So that was from the order that had already happened. Mm -hmm. So this is building up nice. I mean, I would say now if it pulls back, you've gotten responses. Five minutes probably going to close pretty good. Um, so now when it pulls back into the area, I possibly will take this trade up. Um, so let this one minute close. Hopefully it doesn't just rally super fast right here. So I like the risk right now. Uh, I'm looking at the other two. Okay, just watching the CFD. Let's get over there. I want to buy when the market's crashing, so I want this to close and this candle maybe to pull back down very quickly, and then I'll look for that to enter there. All right, so you want to probably not to you want to pull back into that that black candle of the fifty fives. It doesn't pull back into the fifty fives essentially, like right here. Uh, yeah, back down ten points, then I probably don't want to worry about it. But if it can do that, then um. I can definitely factor in something in here. I like it being under New York Open is still too damn. That's good. So you got to pull that trigger. When price is pulling back into that London Open, you can't second guess that five minute, one minute position. My CFD is looking good still. So if it rallies up, great. Um, if it runs off from here, then um, we'll we'll you know we'll know. All right, so that move is taken off. It gives you no chance after it leaves that sideways price in that position that you're looking for. So like when you're looking right in here. You've got to make the decision to take the trade on that pullback into the point of interest. So now that we've closed above New York Open, we can come back down into this. I'd say 57s. I'd be willing to take a trade. Yeah, so it's wanted to push back down into this area here. The 57s, 56s would be great. And I already have my stop loss. So it is below New York. So like I said, if they can just fill the inefficiency, that's what I'm wanting to be a part of. Otherwise, I have to move my risk to like eight, 17, 845s inside that one minute range. And that's not bad either, but I'd just rather it be a little cleaner.
But that thing might take off. Mm. And maybe I'm being a little biased, you know, because I have the CFD position pretty stacked and I'm just kind of watching the price, but, you know, just too much hesitation. Knowing that this, like, this is the area that you're choosing and you have your target, then just, you know, don't hesitate when it gets to your area. So what I'm saying is you could, you know, you could take a position, you know, put your risk, I'd say at the 43 and a quarters, but I'd rather just see it slip and fill the inefficiency so I could take it. So ES did take those lows. YM did just basically fill its inefficiency and still inside the range. So. So that risk would be insane now. So it's it's pretty much that was it. You know, had the chance fifteen and five again. There was a five minute low. There's a five minute high. Price pulled back. Price filled in efficiency. Price came right into the seventy eight six of the area. Price showed me the sign away from the area. Then price came back and gave me the chance at the right time. So this was a scratch, guys. This is just you know it's part of trading. You know you gotta you know today I'm gonna have to do some work. And really focus on things that I can improve on with these trades. Because that first one I took was just not a good trade. So we can fill. We got almost 10 a.m. We can fill that open. Maybe 50%, right? And then we could factor in off of that. That would be nice. So that that fifteen five one minute price looks you know pretty strong. Um, we'll see how they you know respond here at this daily open, but if they can come in and touch, I'd say the open of this candle and fill this inefficiency, there might be a good price one more time under the opening prices here to find a favorable R and R. I'm looking for something like right off that open. 57, 56, somewhere in that area would be nice. Yeah, so we're just kind of seeing, you know, they can, they're not five minute open, five minute close, they're above New York, New York open, and they're holding this structure so they can just slip it and take out some of these people. That would be great. I'd probably look, like I said, I'm looking to, you know, find something favorable in that area. Whereas of right now, that price action is making higher highs, higher lows, higher high, and it's making higher lows. Oh, let's get ready. Ready for the slip price. Now, looking at the other two, ES and YM, they're still very bearish. So, you know, so we know the area. I'm going to move this box because we do know the area. Um, and so that tap right there, 57s, 56s, now I would say, you know, that 50 level is going to be key, but. You might have to get that tap right, right off of that candle there, which is like fifty eight, fifty nines, right? So that just kind of lets you know, right? So I'm kind of just looking at this now because I have that other position on. 
Um, just kind of let you know that, like, if you're going to take that trade, you've got to take it off the open of that candle. So if you're using open high, low, close at the top, open of that candle was 17,858 and a quarter, right? So your entry could have been, you know, 858 and a quarter. And now you're, you know, 68. Um, you already you already bounced 10 points in the profit right from the beginning. And then that 15 minute tap below New York open might, you know, be able to hold. That's even that five minute tap being below New York open. So you could essentially put your risk here. Let me just do this really quick. 1856. All right. And you could essentially, you know, buy below New York open like this little tap right here and then putting your risk here. It'd be very risky. Um, but it's it's just, it, you could do it, you know what I mean? Just depending on how you trade. So for me, I I mean I would do it if it you know, would have came into the area I originally liked. I should have I should have took the trade. So right right now I can't really do anything except watch. I kind of just pray on my CFD position. <laughs> just hesitated way too much today already. But it's part of the game. This is our candle on the 15 that we were referencing referencing, right? Was this candle here? And so then when you go into smaller or five minutes, and then when you go into smaller time frames and you see when price is kind of sitting up at the highs like this and it spikes down, fills that expansion, you've got to take the trade there. All right. No questions. So if we don't see anything or this is the explosion this comes here over 17,900 by 10. That'll be it for me on the futures today. Um, you know, yesterday I took a loss essentially today. Um, since it's a day of the loss as well. Um, so. Mm -hmm. So watching this five minute close here, you know, we had a higher open, higher close. Then we had, you know, uh, basically a push away from New York open. So if we can close a five minute and 15, especially as you can see on this other side, if we can close um five minutes above daily 15 minutes above daily i would think that the high of the day would then get ran this 15 five minute swing will hold uh for today Okay, so that five minute close didn't close above daily, right? So that alone right there, that just lets me know that I'm not gonna take any more trades on futures. It's just um, you know, unless you're like I said, unless you're really factoring in just this 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 New York open area. Um maybe I'm being subjective. Um, but that tab was good. I mean, I think I should have just really grabbed this entry here. Let's see here if I would have got 60s. Price is still floating about four or five points. So the so price is rallying up. Out of that 15 five minute area which is looking really good and i just think that one that one hour area is, is absorption so yeah if you go back and study this price here and the transition there um inside the right area on that five minute price rally close comes back then you get the low set Price then, you know, closes higher, pulls back 42, right? You enter at that point of interest, putting your stop at the low. Um, you're looking at a 10-point risk. And right now, if you enter off that level, you know, you're up a 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 5, right? The 10-point risk. So that was the setup. And now let's say you missed that setup and you wanted to wait for price to rally um, and close higher on that 5-minute, which would have been here. 
Then in that next five minutes, um, you had a chance of price going back below open, filling inefficiency and tapping that open uh, to possibly go higher. So that'll probably be it for me today. Like I said, I'm going to watch it until like 10, 10, 15 um, to see if they ever get back above daily open for that CFD position. But other than that, I mean, I just all the liquidity is sitting here, you know, the 75 level. Um, either they're going to come run you know, like I said, these lows, or they're going to continue higher. So these aren't uh, equal, right? They actually ran the Asian liquidity first. So um, these aren't equal lows, but there is a lot of uh, generated stop losses, I believe, in that area. So um, So looking at ES, they're kind of just sitting there at that same level, uh, under almost under the lows of the day. And then YM had fell from New York Open, which is like 38, 250s, down to like 38. It's about 250 point drop uh, just in the intraday range. And then looking here, I mean, you know, these areas could be working out, um, but it's just... I'm too young for certain, to be honest with you. What's the low on this candle? The low on this candle, 17843s. Okay. Just kind of reminded myself, you know, the 20 level is still open. So no signs of strength on the other two as well with these equal lows. So I want to do a little bit of um, just investigating here really quick. And when you kind of look at it, like I said, upside down, I'm a better buyer than I am a uh, seller. And so, you know, you look at how they set up the price. They ran that price. They rally back to the opening prices and they're failing to go back above daily. So the likelihood of them, you know, going to those equal lows, that bigger time target just are getting so strong. So for me, um, when it comes to that CFD position, uh, my is inside those wicks. So that trade, you know, what is that? 17, or 17, 6, 89 or something like that. So if it comes back and gets that trade, it's okay too. Um, but looking at this right now, it's just very, very difficult on what they're trying to do.
So I do like that reaction. I'd want to put my risk like here, 17843s possibly. 17843s. Let me see what that would look like. 43s. It was it was looking good. Uh, a profit's gonna be like 18k, 18100. Just kind of framing this up. All right, so this one minute can go right back below. God, I missed the tap again, though, I feel like. It looks so much more extended on that five. So I'm going to buy under New York Open here. What a fail. Hopefully they got me under there. Ah, they got me right there. That works, but we'll see if this can play. I do like how it looks um, to get to the highs from this area, right? And so, like, if we can push up into, you know, even 18K, I'd probably settle for today if this trade can go. Um, but, uh, definitely just could have positioned more. I just have that fear of missing out feeling right now. So, maybe that'll end up playing out not so great for me. But a little bit better. I thought they filled me under New York Open. Um, I need to make sure that that position is inside that five-minute alignment and inside that one-minute alignment, right? Because it is a good 15-minute alignment, I think, so. So I do like the price here. I like the expansion here from where, where it was, so let me check on the CFD. Okay, everything's still good over here. Everything is still good. So I do like this. You had ES already take the lows. You had um, you have NQ holding this H1 structure. So if we can get a push back above seventeen nine today, I think I'll probably be uh, you know, I'll be pretty good with the trade for what we get. So we do have the one minute here. I just kind of want to make sure we can see five and fifteen really clearly. It's kind of getting distorted here. So if we can get these five minutes to push out of this area, then that would be great. So I want to see that when you're looking at, you know, what we've got going now, we want price to go above the daily and then slip the high of the day, which would be the 17930s. So now it's just all about getting the price action where you want. Now, one thing I can say um, with this entry, right, they gave me, that was good. You know, price is pushing back down. I pretty much got the wick, the wick tap right there and then rally, right? So the difference is now when I go back and study this, I need to be inside the five minute candle and the one minute alignment. And I need to make sure I'm my, no matter what my entry is below opening price. Other than that, if this can hold, I think that this trade will be pretty good to get to the highs and take out the, the shorts from uh, earlier today. So, like I said, took a loss in the first account. This is a new combine account because I just didn't want to um, take any more trades on that account because just being honest, I mean, there was really not, the volatility was very low. I had a CFD position that I had pretty much locked and I only wanted to take a position here if I could meet the requirements. And so as of now, it meets the requirements. Uh, we push above 17,930s. 
uh, it definitely would meet the requirements. And then if we can hold this trade on that one hour going into the close of the day, I just kind of want to show that here in a second. Um, what we're kind of looking at from a bigger perspective here is that if we can get from, you know, higher high, higher low to then extend up to 18K, um, you know, going into lunch and power hour, that'd be pretty nice. But we'll see what they decide to do. Now, I would say this, as this price rallies, like you have higher, 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 low, and you're five minutes showing you, you're trying to, you know, run up. Well, right now I have 17,843 is the risk, right? Well, really, I need probably like 53 now, like 54 uh, to go ahead and secure more of the bag. So as this five minute opens and closes, as long as it closes bullish and price keeps breaking whole levels and stuff like that and staying above daily open, I need to eventually reduce this risk down. So essentially, I only want to risk about 400 on the trade so this would be essentially like a one-to-one -one. um so we can get to like 800 in profits for the day and uh unrealized gains i'll probably reduce this down from 43 down to 53 to reduce my risk down to the exact amount so a 10 point risk from where i got in would be 59 and then uh 39 right so 59 would be here which would be pretty good right from where i got in so getting my stop loss at that 55 area I'm currently floating basically about a one-to-one -one, because I just gave it some space just in case. But then when price moves in my favor, I can reduce down quickly. So. Yeah, I'm just logging in over here. So this is good um, for this here. And... Uh, this is actually, um, you know, exactly what we're looking for, right? We're looking for that 15 and five to be in alignment. We're looking for those closures higher. And so we can continue to get this pop here. I think we'll be okay. Um, and then the CFD price is looking really good from that. Basically, let's just say 17, 690 range. Um, it's over like 50 plus points in profit, so. This can just pump the highs here, then uh, there's a chance. If not, then, um, you know, they're playing. So yeah, I just want to see this price rally. One hour looks great. I mean, the one hour all day to me has been saying buys. Just now when you have that type of situation, you've got to um, play at the low extremities of the range and play under your opening price. So currently like a one-to-one. -one. So still here looking at the price. Let's see what they're going to do. I just feel like they're going to pump this thing. Um, but we'll know here sooner and later. Like I said, now, if this trade was below that New York open, that risk would reduce down dramatically. All right. So I'll be watching these five minute prices because if they can't close, they close back below the daily open. Um, I may I'll reduce the risk for sure. And I may even cut the trade. It just depends. But most likely, I don't want to cut the trade, but it's just, you know, because those one hours look really good to hold up. I just like the H1 uh, price action here, so we'll see what we get.
Okay. So with that close, like I said, you know, we're watching those 15 and fives. Those 15s look good. Um, you know, the five looks pretty good. So it's just going to come down to how they actually close here. One hours look, I mean, the one hours just look like 18K for me, for sure. Like, I just, you know, <clears throat> the only one that's took the lows today is ES. So it's just like, are they going to go take the lows here on, on, um, on NQ as well, you know, or what do they, or what are they wanting to do basically? So the way that price is going against me right now, um, you know, you're not getting, you're getting basically, you're not getting what you're wanting to see, right? If price can close now below daily open um, and start to fail here, I would say it's a wrap because they're going to, they could easily just go lower back into the bolt, especially into my price or even New York open price, they could do that. So I'll just watch this area close. If they can extend back up above 17.9 again, then great. If not, then, um, you know, I'll probably just manage the position and let it play out today. Still holding the CFD positions. They haven't really been touched, so it's just kind of watching. And then having that higher time frame bias here that we're going to get to 18K and higher. So let me do some, uh, take some notes here really quick. So those five minutes just aren't showing me anything right now. Did close above daily open. That's the only thing that, you know, so this next candle, like any closures below to me than daily open, um, you know, they challenge this one minute, five minute swing. So. Pull this back just a tad. So that price is like I said, you're you've got higher high, higher low, higher high. You can't get past that whole level like this. Um to me. It's going to really come down to what they want to do here. Um, but using this risk low, like I wanted to use this low at this point, I really don't want to see, you know, if it goes back below daily open, I'd probably reduce that risk down to 10 points. But as of right now, it seems like a good stack. You can kind of see it that way, right, with the end of the day being right here. So if we could, you know, people get tired of, you know, holding this accumulation and then they finally start giving up their orders, I would love to see price run up at least 18k you know 18k would be really nice um so that'd be over 100 plus points so if they can do that it'd be great you know and then same thing with the cfd pricing i need to plot the position but let's just say hypothetically i got the 80 levels all right 79 was you know but 79 is the level that they gave me um really good limit so let's say here have the 80 level and then i don't want to exit this trade um from this 80 level, right? Let's just say 80 here is like right there. I really don't want to exit this trade until here, about 200 plus points. And I'll, I'll kind of gauge it at the 17, um, you know, the 17, uh, what is it? 850 levels. So that's where I'll kind of have an idea. 17, 17, 850s, right? So I can really start to, you know, I have enough volume on this trade on CFD that I can pull some of that volume and look to take more trades, but then have that idea, like understanding the support level, you know, double bottom base. So
So this is that this is what I'm saying, right? If price can't break on this five minute high, high, high low, right? If they can't break higher than the whole level and hold the daily open, that's not a good sign for a trade like this. I would say personally. Wait one second. Let me make sure my computer is on charge here. Okay. So let's see how this five minute closes. Like I said, if it closes below um below the open, the daily open, then I don't I don't like this trade anymore. I'm just tired of um you know playing with them here in this area, not really going anywhere for the day. All right, does 15 minutes and five close strong, then I have a little bit more confidence to push up to 18k. <clears throat> All right, guys, so this this price isn't really showing me the the signs after that rejection from 17.9, you know, unless we can hold daily here. Another five-minute close. It was opening price, so that's good. And then we have the 15-minute loading in 10 minutes. So for me, it's just like there's if this, if this goes under and closes at all, there's really – I have to reduce that risk down. There's no reason to risk the 20 points at that point to me. So let's get this push. We'll push a seat there through the 17900s. That'd be great. So we're still holding above daily open pretty well, but any slips below that and, you know. So still really nothing here that's showing me um that we're gonna that we're gonna extend, right? It's just we're holding that daily open, that's about it. That fifteen minute rejection, five minute rejection off that seventeen nine hundred level just uh to me are just I don't know. It's easier to think about with the CFD position because it's the lower, obviously, injury. But this one is harder just because, you know, having this risk here at 43 um, is way too far. And so I'm going to have to condense that risk down um, just watching this daily. So continue to watch here. Probably keep the recording going to like 1030. Um, just a recap on my top tip account. I did take a loss in the first trade there. Um, I took a CFD trade. I had a limit that was set. Beautiful limit. Still holding that trade currently. Um, started this combine I have because I hadn't started it yet. And um, this is the trade for it. So the goal of April for me is to get two XFA accounts and then have my third XFA account um by the you know by halfway of may um because i want to hit that max allocation with this platform so as of right now that push above you know five minute you know five minute price looking really good if we can get the closure going higher showing me signs of strength then um you know i'll go ahead and trail that risk up to this five minute low 
which would be like right here in the 50s. So let me go ahead and move my price too, just so we have an idea. But um, 17, uh, 850s. Just so we have an understanding of where that price is. And then um, looks really good. So I think we're going to get a really good day on our hands here. CFD price is flying. Uh, so the the patience there has been a lot easier. Um, so pretty excited because when I see this one hour play, usually it works out. So I'm going to continue to watch um, as we extend up. And now I wish I would have actually took this on my other uh, account, but it's okay. Because <laughs> my goal is to have three accounts, so... Okay, so already, you know, as soon as we break out of the 15 five minute area, um, I will go ahead and reduce this risk down to uh, probably 18, seven or 17, 850s. I uh, just really want to see that push through the levels. And then um, to look at this from one another perspective, if this can work and continue to go, um, we're looking at that one hour price here. Um, one hour price looks really good to extend up to like 18k or previous uh, support resistance 1850 so that's kind of what I'm anticipating today um, you know locking in so my average risk is 400 so at about a one to two you could essentially be break even as well right um, so you could move your order up into that New York open area and just wait for this pop on through so I like to wait for the pop on through and then I'm going to go break even so as we're doing this right now, just from knowing, you know, from doing this for a little bit now, um, you know, this looks good. So one hour area is looking really nice. So want to see this five minute, how it's going to close, if they're going to run for those wicks. And um, I'm going to protect this trade. Now, looking at this one, like I said, this one's already protected. We took a really good trade. Price rallied up. We parceled in that area. Price came back down. I just held what I had left. Price continues to rally. And so now, um, you know, with that trade pushing away, it can essentially go from where its original risk was now to here price goes higher high i could probably go um and start moving it based off down candles lows right and securing the bag um, so let's take a look at nq one more time see if we're gonna get this push here on the uh uh the one hour higher but we're gonna focus on 15 so i'm gonna see 15 and 5 together here And so if we can just push on through for this account uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and secure. But um, just watching this five minute here. Okay, so it looks like we're going to push through. It looks good right now. There's not really any signs of weakness. So uh, if we can just run through that 17,931 highs, um, you know, I think we could really be uh, in a pretty nice profit here.
So this next, you know, minute and 40 seconds, like I said, if we can continue to hold 17,900, I think we can just go ahead and push those highs out. You do have um, e or EM, YM in a really good spot. That pullback, I think, is, is solidified. You do have ES, had already took the lows and set a low at 50, 81 and a quarter. Um, so it's like now they all kind of have that permission to run run up to me. So 18K on, on futures today would be great for me for, you know, this position that I took. And then, um, yeah, 18K wouldn't be bad at all. So really focus on that, you know, 15 and 5 price, to be honest. That 15 minute on the far left can close bullish above 17.9. And, um, you know, we don't get a dramatic little fall here going into 10.30 then I do think we could push that price on up. But they start to break down, you know, and ever go back below daily open, they're just, you know, they're basically just playing around at that point. So uh, we close this candle above 17.9. I'll probably go ahead and taper this one off because I don't want them to come back all the way back to fill that and take me out today. But it looks good. CFD, obviously, it's I'm not even worried about it. Just kind of letting it play out. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so that you guys see the fifteen price, five minute price, I and mean, it's still up there, but it's just playing, right? So just got to be patient and let them go slip these wicks really quick. Ah, they're playing. <laughs> so where am I going to position this? So they could slip that daily open. They could do a lot of different things um, here, but I'm watching 15 and 5 price to continue. Uh, but if they break below, uh, seventeen nine hundred. I mean, this could be difficult, y'all. This could be like them, you know, just really having trouble at the seventeen nine level. So, you know, yeah, that's that's pushing pretty pretty fast, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure this one. I'm not gonna let them take that from me today. It's pointless. They pull back and take me right out. Um. So be it. I mean, I could also use um my order was below New York open. I'd probably go ahead and just use 53s, but um this is not looking so great, honestly. They could come right back below New York open. But I just don't want to uh take the experience of loss on here today on this one. So if I can just be patient and see if 15 price can ride. And I'm just looking for that hour to close above 17.9. If they can't close above 17.9, then I, don't, I have no idea what they're going to do. And this is obviously, you know, um, what I'm doing here, since we are kind of like, you know, hitting the 17.75, 17.80 level, I had original risk here. I moved my risk here. My entry is basically, let's just say 17.680s. So I could keep trailing it, right? I could keep trailing the risk, but this one's a better entry. So I don't really have to do that here. But this, I have to. I have no choice because, um, you know, this five-minute down candle here, and then you get the higher high and you go above the whole level. If they slip again um, and just tap me out, yeah, I'm going to be upset. But, you know, I'd rather do that than, you know, take a, uh, a loss on something that I had a you know a fairly good you know one to two on so and a fairly good entry I mean I was pretty damn close to New York Open um I just got filled a little bit higher so so hopefully these fifteens can show me some love here and extend up to eighteen. And I will be happy with the TP being in the 80s. Honestly, it's like 84 and a quarter that that can work out. So, 
I'm gonna sit back now and see. So to me, I just, just do not like how that 15 just can't get above those highs, right? And so like usually you would think people are buying that to try to push it. And so there is, they're selling off on them. So that makes sense. But now it's just like if they pull this all the way back into the area and then slip this area and hit the New York, um, one, I'll be available. But two, like I said, I I would wish that I had that order at that New York or below because then I could, you know, factor in a little bit more risk from there. Um, so, ES still trying to get above 51 and then YM trying to get above 38, 100. So, we're all kind of like at a whole level. So we're having a hard time at 17.9. Um, want to see if ES can break 51 and if uh, YM can break this 38.100 because I feel like if they can, then we might have a chance to break uh, 17.900 and higher here on NQ. But they're just respecting that level so much right now. And, you know, we did get that five minute never to close higher high. So we're still just kind of in a range. So. There's difficult trading to me, you know, like the one hour is good pricing, but now it's going to come down to candle closures. You know, if we can get above 17.9 and close, then there's a chance I think we could reach for that next 50 level, next whole level um, on that one hour. So 23 minutes from now, if, you know, we're closing below 17.9, I mean, this is going to fall over. Yeah, 23 minutes from now, we're closing above 17.9. I think we go to 18K, you know, maybe even 18 uh one one hundred eighteen one fifties. So just the price breakdown is terrible. So want to see price go back above 17.9, you know, I don't want to see it keep closing below because that that rejection is not good. And then same thing with ES, that 5,100 level and 38,100 on YM. So the more they reject here, um, you know. So that price is not looking good to me, which we already risk off on this trade. So if they come back down and tap it, that it is what it is. Um, but they're pushing two, they're pushing away from seventeen nine, and they're basically um getting too close to that daily open for me. So we'll see what these last fifteen minutes do going into eleven. Hopefully, we'll be you know going a little bit higher here, and. Uh, 
can secure a little bit of profits here on the uh, top step. So yeah, guys, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're just making it difficult. They're moving price sideways, so it's just not the type of day to take multiple trades. So let me check CFD here. It's just annoying because it does look still so good over there. And I'm, you know, this one is a little bit more challenging. You're getting price to push away from the whole level, you know. So the swing of the move is being attacked every time. Right. And it's just like they're stacking up to this upside. It's like rally up, you know. <laughs> but that could just mean that 17.9 level is just super strong. But it's just like one, two, three, four areas of sell, you know, a run. And now you got people stuck here. And then their sell is more stop stuck here. It's like, come on, dude. What are you talking about? Um, so see if they manipulate or what they do here going into 11.15. So this looks good. They can just go and push this price. There's only so much time in the day, you know what I mean? So let's see what they do. I mean, on that CFD price, I mean, from where we got in, let's just say hypothetically you got 17700 I mean, I could see price going all the way back to 18100 eventually on that one hour. So even equilibrium halfway would be like seventeen eight, or excuse me, 17, uh, excuse me, 18K on there. So um, price looks good there. If we can just continue and close above those whole levels to attack the wicks, then I uh, feel good about it. Just, oof. They go back below 17.9 anymore. I'm just like, uh, it's time of day.
So seeing price going back above that 17.9 is good. So now it's just like, can we build a 15 and five now? But so this five minute closes above there. I could definitely see the 17.930 and two quarters pushed out. Um, and then I just wouldn't see what, what could stop them on a one hour um, if they can do that. Uh, what would stop them on a one hour from pushing up to 18K at, at minimum? You know, market open, 18, uh, 151. So that previous support that we broke earlier this week was like 18,050s. So um, let's see where we close here. Okay, so 15-minute close is above the whole level. Five-minute close looks pretty good. So they can stay above, you know, I'd say the daily open now and the 17.9, that would be perfect. Um, We do have, let me check really quick. We do have that news that comes out. So they could easily spike down and just run me out and then go um, on the futures position. And then Forex Factory is down. There it was. So now it's back. Okay. okay we started this morning. So 7.30. We have that. Today is 10.45. Make sure we're on. Okay. So Fed speaks. So. Let me make sure this is in the right time zone. So, yeah, I will say this, guys. I do not, not like how price is playing today. Like, this is just, I'm just annoying to me. So, just the one hour price looks so good on NQ to continue. Um, it's really going to come down to where we close. All right. So, I think having our, you know, stop loss, you know, in small a small profit or just basically break even is good. And then that CFD position, um, I damn near almost want to just let me see if I need to trail that too. I'm in a good spot there still. So Just to me, it's just like there's so many shorts sitting at the 17.9 and stop losses right here at these 30s, right? At the high of the day, 17.930. So I'm going to wait. I, I want this 18K level. It's either it's coming for coming back to me or it's going it's going up for me. So So pretty good price action here. Um, just want to keep getting, like, I just want to get a really big push here, guys, up to 18K. I just don't see why they wouldn't. If they were to sell this off at this point, I'd be like, all right, rah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the H1s look really good.
Yeah, we can get this push Cito here, right? We're just having a hard time breaking the highs here on the 15 and 5. Um, just want to see this one hour close. So it's a super thin day, like he's saying, there's not that much liquidity. Um, and that's why I think the inefficiency over time will get filled on that one hour. Um, it seems pretty efficient on the way up here. And we we continue to hold the whole level. So um, as long as we continue here, and like I said, push 17, 930s on that 15 and 5, I think we have a good chance to get up to, uh, you know, higher pricing. But we're still just struggling right here. It looks like we're going to get that push. So I'm pretty excited on that. If. <laughs> if. Yeah, so we're just looking for that H1 higher high, 17,800 on CFD, um, 17,930s here on, uh, on futures. And yes, I can have better positioning on the 15 and 5, which I do on CFD, but I've got to focus here. on getting my better positioning on um, futures as well. But I'm happy with what we're getting. I feel like we could get up to 18K. I feel like we could slip, you know, the 950s. Let me go ahead and mark those really quick. Just so slip out on the whole level, or excuse me, half level here. <clears throat> but we're taking forever, 17, 950. We're taking forever to get out of this area. Um, So, you know, Would want to see it start getting its way up there here pretty soon. This morning, yeah. Like, I mean, we've literally hit the seven, we've hit these same levels. So I just, when you look across the board, all three of them, I feel like their one hour is going to extend up. And I like ES above 5120. So those look really good to push out those highs from today. And then let me take a look here what I'm doing. Okay. So. I want to see this push on through, and like I said, I'm shooting for about uh twelve hundred to thirteen on this for on this account, and I just want to. My goal is to win three days out of the week. If I can do that for two weeks, I should be able to pass the combine on this one. You know, uh, 
before April's up. And my goal is to have two XFA accounts. So that would be awesome. Check CFDs. I think we're going to get the push through. Really good price right there. So I'm going to move this really quick so it's not in our way. So we can see as soon as that high is swept. Um, and like I said, I'm looking for like 18K and I'm also looking for like the slip of this liquidity right here. Right. So like 17, nine, uh, nine fifties would be great. But we are punching pretty fast now. Okay, so gonna be watching the price right here, but I want to see if it can continue. Right to keep crushing up to my levels. So the last five minute down candle, though, I want to go ahead and just just so I know I'm not going to even think about it. I'm going to move it into right here. That last five minute down candle before I move. Um, just to secure some more of the bag in case. Now, I may end up pulling some of this just because I like where it's at and I like the number for today. But I don't want to take myself out of a profit, though, either. Right. So I'm going to be watching the one minute, five minute opens here. And focusing on that one hour where it's going to close here in four minutes, because I want to see it keep push a C doing. Um, that would be great. Um, but also, I want to see. Um, so I don't want to take myself, like I said, out of profits. And I think this could really extend up. Right here. So. So I'm going to probably pull this for today on this one. I would trail the risk, but today I just want to pull it, honestly. If it's going to let me. <laughs> okay, so that's it for this for this uh, stream today. Uh, for this combine, um, you know, I wanted to close uh, with a good profit for the day here. Um, now, I did lose a trade on my, uh, my other account, which is okay. It was, it was a predetermined loss for that account. Um, and then this exit here was uh, pretty good. So let me check CFD and then we will be getting out of here. But other than that, I appreciate you guys for watching. It was very choppy today. There was a lot to um, learn. And, you know, I'm anticipating obviously price to continue to do these things. But um, when I get, you know, into the lab here today, I'll be able to focus on watching that replay and just really seeing um, where I could have executed a little bit better inside those entries and uh you know getting out of the market so i uh, appreciate again watching let me know if there's anything i can make better or make you know articulate the message a little bit more and uh have a good rest of your day